All right, looking at 5.3 on the second page, these questions are very important for you to, under to understand. If you can transform one object onto another object and all the points line up perfectly, then you know that those figures are congruent. Okay, and that's called transformation congruence. So let's look at question eight. It says a classmate says that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because there's a reflection across the y-axis that maps ABC onto DEF. What is the classmate's error? So they're saying it reflects over the y-axis. Here's the y-axis. And look at the order. A goes with D, B goes with E, and then C goes with F. So let's make sure that if we're reflecting, this ends up correct. So if we're looking at a reflection, A, which is three units away from the y-axis, we need to go three units to the right. Okay. And then if B, B is one, two units away from the y-axis, then we go two units to the right. And then lastly, I guess I'll use this color. If C is one unit away from the y-axis, then after reflection, it should be one unit away. But notice here that C goes with D, but does C go with D as we showed right here? No, D is supposed to go with A. And then you'll notice that F goes with A. Does F go with A? No, F is supposed to go with C. So something wrong happened here. And that is the actual transformation that's been done, if you look at it again, is if you just take A and move it one, two, three, four units to the right and end up with D, right? A and D go together. Then we should be able to shift all of the points five units to the right. So we'll say right five units. The same should be true when we're looking at B to E to the right five units. Let's write X plus five. <clears throat> so B, did I say five or four? One, two, three, four. Oh, my bad. Sorry. This is four. So this should also be four. So we go one, two, three, four. Oh, nice. B does map on to E, and then C should map on to F, going just four units to the right. So C, we go one, two, three, four. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So it's actually a transformation to the right. Okay, cool. Let's check out these problems. It says describe the congruence transformation. That maps figure A onto figure B. So we're going from A to B. This order is very important, okay? Because if you're translating down and to the right from figure A to B, if you wanted to know from figure B to A, it would be up and to the left. It would be backwards. So just make sure you're looking at this order. So from A, to B over here, um, I had some people thinking that you can reflect it and then um, reflect it again. So reflect it over the y-axis, reflect it over the x-axis, and then you'll end up with B. Um, so I think I can do that just by... I'm going to create a straight line here. So I want it to actually reflect over the y-axis and over the x-axis. So it needs to be visualized like this. Let's see if this works. Okay, if I were to reflect it, I can go rotate, and this is flip vertically, which should be across the x-axis. And then if I flipped it across the y-axis, be like that. Does that map on top of the other one? No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's go back. Someone else, though, thought that we would rotate it. 
And if you ever want, ask in class for some patty paper. I have patty paper. But essentially, with patty paper, you can lay this piece of paper on top of the graph, draw over, like I have in yellow here, draw over the original, so the pre-image, which is A in this case, and then stick your pencil so that it's pointing directly in the middle, and then rotate and then rotate the patty paper around. And I can kind of imitate that here with uh, the rotations that this has. So we'll do rotate 90 degrees to the left. And then if I did that again, that would be 180 degrees, right? If I go 90 and then 90, that'd be 180. Does this map it onto B? No, it does not. So I would say, Get your hands on some patty paper while you're in class if you're not understanding this. Simply, all we have to do for this transformation is, so from this, that corresponds with this, we go down one, two, three, four units, and then one, two, three, four, five units to the right. So you can write translate down four units and then to the right five units. Or you can just write x plus 5, y minus 4. That's a translation. Okay. But the idea here is <laughs> these all should all be congruent, but sometimes they're not congruent. And so you need to make sure that if you went down 4 to the right 5, you have to do the same thing for every one of these down 4 to the right 5, this point to this point, down 4 to the right 5, and then this point to this point should be down 4 to the right 5. Okay, So it has to be for every uh, vertice of that shape. Let's try this one. How do we get from A to B? So once again, uh, you know what I can actually do this right here and then make sure that lines up perfectly let's put that right on top there right on top right on top there we go cool so let's try it out let's do a rotation first that would be 90 degrees clockwise which is I'm using this program, it's rotate 90 degrees to the right. Does that map it on top? No, it does not. How about um, if we translated it? If we translated it, I can basically just go like this. Does this translate? I'm just shifting it. Does this translate to be on top of it? Does it match up perfect perfectly? No, it does not. So finally, I'm going to try our final option, which is reflection. Let's reflect it over the x-axis. Does it map? Good. So like I said, reflection over the x-axis. Good. This one you should be able to see quite clearly especially with how uh, unique this shape is, that this is just a translation. Maps right on top of it. And then we should be able to say we're going to the left one, two units. X minus two, let's make that legible. And then down, 1, 2, 3. So y minus 3. That gets us from A to B. Instead of writing translate to the left 2 and down 3, I can just write this here. Much quicker. All right, this one right here looks like it will be um, a composition of transformations. It doesn't look like I can get it with one go. And just remember when we're doing this that when you have a composition like multiple different transformations to get from A to B, let's say. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as someone else does it. You can do it in many different ways. 
So let's pop out that axes. That's right, I said axes, not axis. Because they're axes. Okay, here we go. I think I got that good enough. Let's start out with a reflection over the x-axis. So I'm going to flip it vertically. And then it looks like the rest of the way to get there, all I have to do is translate it. Boom, just like that. So we know it's a reflection. over the x-axis, oh, I said axis, <laughs> over the x-axis, and then a translation it was down one and to the right two, so to the right two and down one, that's how we can write that in case you're wondering, oh man, what if I don't want to write reflection over the x axis? Well, there's a rule for that too. Do you know what the rule is? What changes from negative 2, comma 1 to that new point when we reflected it right here? This is negative 2, negative 1. The rule should be x, comma, negative y. That should be true for every point on that uh, shape, that polygon. Okay, cool. Let's do. Let's do. Which one should we do? How about this one? I think this one will be fun, and I have enough time. I think. Okay, got that. Okay. Let's do Shape. Oh, there you go. That's good. Okay. So I think I'm looking at it. I'm saying, oh, I think there's a rotation in there. 180 degrees will help. So I'm going to go rotate left, I guess, and then once again. And again, this would work with patty paper. Okay, looks like we're really close. It looks like it just barely overlaps, or it looks like it has the same orientation. So now I've rotated 180 degrees. Doesn't matter if it's clockwise or counterclockwise, but we have to say it's about the origin. Zero, zero. And then from here, how do we get this point to this point? How do we get this point to this point? And the rest of these, this point to this point. We are going down one into the right one. It's for all of these. Down one into the right one. Okay. Good. So we are going to translate it down one into the right one, which I can write as x plus one, y minus one. And the rule for 180 degree rotation can be written like this, negative x comma negative y. You have all of those notes on the 5.3 notes under the congruence transformations. Okay, Rotation, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, um, reflection, translation, all of those. Okay, cool, I'm out of time.